Epilogue. Calvin Holmes was sentenced to three years in youth custody for conspiracy to supply drugs. Most of the younger boys who worked as delivery riders for KMG got off with police cautions and supervision orders. A few who had previous drug convictions received three to six months in youth custody. Without funding from Keith Moore, the JT Martin Youth Centre and Boxing Club closed its doors for the final time after the 2004 Christmas party. No charges were brought against Ken Fowler, who died of a heart attack a few months later. Madeline Burrows, the nice lady who called James with his deliveries, got a five-year prison sentence, as did her younger brother, Joseph Burrows, aka Crazy Joe. Over 130 other members of KMG received prison sentences as a direct result of the MI5 surveillance operation on Thunder Foods. Dinesh's dad, Parvinder Singh, received a 12-year prison sentence. Dinesh Singh and his mother moved away to live near relatives in South London. Keith Moore spent over a week being interviewed by DEA officials at their headquarters in Washington, D.C. Keith was bitter about the Lambiette cartel's brutal attempt to steal his money and provided a mass of information that led to the immediate seizure of $130 million in drug money and the arrest of several senior figures within the Lambiac organisation. Keith was later flown back to Britain, where he pleaded guilty to numerous charges relating to money laundering and drug trafficking. The judge sentenced Keith to 18 years in prison and recommended that he should not be considered for early release until he had served at least 10. The police have uncovered £12 million of Keith's personal fortune, but he is still believed to have at least another £40 million in secret bank accounts. Junior Moore fully recovered from his injuries and flew back to Britain. Shortly afterwards, he was expelled from Grey Park School for persistent truancy. His mother said she was sick of his behaviour and didn't want him ending up like his father. She found him a place at a tough boarding school that specialises in dealing with difficult boys. April Moore quickly grew tired of James Beckett not responding to her text messages and emails. She returned James's best watch to the address where the Beckett family had supposedly moved and it was eventually forwarded to Cherub Campus. When James opened the envelope, he found his watch had been hammered into a dozen pieces. It was accompanied by a note reading, You could at least have had the decency to dump me to my face. Hope you die slowly. April. John Jones announced he was leaving MI5 after 19 years of service. He has accepted a new job as a Cherub Mission Controller. Ewart and Zara Asker are expecting their second child in April 2005. Nicole Edison now lives with two retired cherubs on a farm in Shropshire. She has two young stepbrothers who she adores and a boyfriend called James. She attends twice weekly counselling sessions and is slowly coming to terms with the loss of her family. Dr McCafferty's beloved mission preparation building is on schedule to be completed in February 2005. He conducted a review of Nicole's recruitment to Cherub to see if any mistakes had been made. His report reached the following conclusion. If anything, the tests Nicole Edison completed before being asked to join Cherub show that she had an above average chance of becoming a successful agent. Unfortunately, no recruitment test yet devised can account for all the complexities of human nature. It seems likely that a small number of unsuitable candidates will be recruited into Cherub for as long as the organisation exists. All we can do is remain vigilant and try to keep this number to a minimum. A few weeks after James returned from Miami, Amy Collins left campus to live with her brother in Australia. James was part of the crowd that waved her through the departure gate at Heathrow Airport. It took Kyle Blumen and Lauren Adams two months to clean out all the ditches at the back of campus. Kyle was suspended from missions for another four months. Lauren re-entered basic training with her daily countdown paper in her pocket and a grim determination to make it through, no matter how tough Mr Large tried to make it. After a few weeks back on campus, Kerry Chang was sent to Hong Kong on a mission that looked set to last several months. James and Kerry are exchanging daily emails and occasionally speak to each other on the phone. James Adams used his time on campus to catch up on schoolwork. He has recently started studying for GCSE exams in three of his strongest subjects, has begun regular weight training, and narrowly failed a second Dan black belt grading in karate class. 
he expects to be assigned to another undercover mission in early 2005.